at Heinz Field today. Um, look forward to working with you all year long. Garrett Cole is nice enough to give us a few minutes before he goes home for the day. Uh, as everybody knows, use the raise hand function at the bottom of your screen and we'll get through as many questions as we can uh, in the next 10 or 15 minutes. Who has the first question? Meredith Morakovic, please unmute. Hi, Garrett. Is there anything specific that you're focusing on this spring? Um, not really. Uh, I think that I come in in a good spot and um, just looking to settle in, uh, especially the first few weeks as you know, the volume of throwing ramps up and, um, you know, everything's exciting and new. And so just stay disciplined uh, early and, and get on the right track. You mentioned settling in. Just how odd is everything with all the protocols in place? I know you guys dealt with it during the regular season a bit last yeah, week. Yeah, it's, um, well, I mean, the weather's nice here. And so, um, you know, it just encourages us to get outside. So we'll make the best of it that we can. And it's always nice to, you know, see the whole group again. Um, you know, missed a lot of the guys. So um, there's, there's, there's some positives, even though, you know, we still got to navigate this virus. Thank you. Take another from Sweeney Murdy. Sweeney, go ahead. Garrett, how you doing? It's nice to see you. Good to see you. Uh, I was reading the Q and A you did with Steve Serby, the New York Post. And one of the things that stood out to me when he asked you about your goals, you said, I'd like to settle in to a good delivery sooner rather than later. And I'm curious for a guy who's done this, you know, pretty much his whole life at this point, how do you go, what's the process like for settling into a good delivery? What are the easy parts? What are the hard parts as you navigate these next you know, month and a half here? Yeah, I think that, I mean, I mean, we have time. I mean, we want to finish at, you know, at the, the end of the year with, with our best delivery. So, you know, you don't want to rush, but you want to be deliberate with your practice early. The challenges are, you know, the volume ramps up really quick. You're starting to face hitters. So after you face hitters, you go into games. As you go into games, every single time you, you know, you're pushing the amount of pitches. So quite often, you know, or especially earlier, you're walking off the mound fatigued. And I think the most important thing to try and uh, to settle into your delivery as quick as possible is to, you know, try to limit the amount of bad reps and, and, and try to, you know, have a high percentage, high a high percentage of, of, of good quality execution. So really just staying disciplined, um, you know, on, on, on focusing on every rep uh, and trying to bring more good out than bad, um, knowing that we have enough time to prepare and, um, you know, the process will take care of itself naturally as, as, as long as we, you know, we throw quality work out there. What are the visible signs for you that your delivery is comfortable and allowing you to do what you want it to do? I recall, you know, many years ago, Mike Messina said getting his fastball to the glove side was the sign that everything is moving in the right direction for him. What are, what are the signs for you? Yeah. I mean, that's a, that's a pretty staple. That's a pretty staple read from, from a lot of pitches or for a lot of pitchers, rather the extension side fastball is, um, you know, it, it forces you to be really balanced through your delivery um, and deliver the ball, you know, on time. Um, so it's a, whoa, sorry, is a really good indication of, um, you know, how, how, how well you controlled your delivery to that point. I think for me, I look at that pitch uh, along with just, you know, the fastball profile in general, not having, you know, try to limit the, the arm side run, try to be as efficient with the rep as I can. I always like, to you know, try to be put as minimal effort as I can and get as, as much power and much efficiency as I can out of the rep. Um, so I'm focusing on, on those kind of things right now and, and looking for the ball to carry through the glove and the pitch shapes to, you know, to, to be where I want them to be. So um, that's, where, that's, what I'll, that's what I'll do. Thank you. I'm done, but is everything okay over there? Yeah, it's like a, just a collapse. There's, it's a bit windy. Hi, Marley. It didn't hit Garrett, don't worry. No, it's okay. Everybody's good. Uh, Marley Rivera, you have the next question. Sorry about that. Um, um, hello, Garrett. Uh, hope Hi. you and your family and, and, and Caden are doing well. So, um, Garrett, you have shared a rotation with elite pitchers. In, in Houston, you had Cy Young winners like Justin Verlander and Zach Greinke. How does it benefit you as a pitcher having those types of guys around you? Now you're going to get, you know, two-time Cy Young winner Corey Kluber and, and even the unfulfilled uh, potential of your former teammate, uh, Jamison Tayon. 
Yeah, just one more. Dallas Keuchel just can't snub Dallas. Oh, of course. <laughs> um, never, never, but, never snub I mean, Dallas. <laughs> no, Corey is um, Corey's a true craftsman. Uh, always enjoyed watching the pitch, I, I think, along with a, a, a quite a lot of people. Um, I think Jameson is is in a really good spot. I'm really encouraged. Um, we, we have a really good, you know, it's already been a couple of days. Everybody's riding on a high, getting to see each other again. But so far, everybody's enjoying everybody else and getting to know people. Um, I think the talent is certainly there. I mean, we've heard the organization talk about it. Um, you, you, you can look at the, you know, you can look at the roster card right now and say, wow, the ceilings are really high. So I think there's a lot of excitement there. And, and you know, it's just fun to root root for these guys. You know, you, you want Monty to take the next step forward. He's an easy guy to root for. You want Jamo to do it as well. And we have a lot of young talent right there behind. And and I think everybody's pulling for Corey to, you know, you know, reestablish you know, that back-to-back Cy Young kind of form. So, um, you know, it's a, a really enjoyable rotation and uh, a lot of potential. So looking very, very forward to the season. You can take another from Chris. And Garrett, just as a quick follow-up. Oh. No, 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 go ahead, go ahead, Marley. Sorry. No, no, I didn't want to interrupt if you wanted. Uh, to, no, anyway, no. I just wanted to do a quick follow up. Do you do you consider the 2021 season your maybe true first season with the Yankees because of what happened last year it being so weird and you will hopefully get to play 162 and in front of Yankee fans at some point? Yeah, well, certainly excited to play in front of the fans. That's for sure. Um, so that will be that will be that will be very, very exciting. Um, but, you know. Every year presents different challenges, right? So even though the volume of games isn't the same as normal and, you know, there were no fans and everything, I mean, it was still, you know, it was still a season and there were a lot of things behind the scenes and a lot of protocols and how we had to all navigate, you know, going through this challenging time that, that, that made it, you know, just I feel like on par and mentally at least with all the other seasons. So last year was my first year and, and this year, you know, we have, we have hope of getting back to normalcy and, and, uh, and uh, at some point in the future and, and maybe even looking forward to the end of this year or next season. So that that's kind of where I'm at on that. Christy, go ahead. You have the next question. Hi, Garrett. I'm just curious. Um, last year was such an unusual year in terms of workload and starting, stopping. How do you think that will carry over for you personally this year? What precautions might you take because of that? And or did you change any of your off season because of, of what last year was like? I mean, I just took a little bit of time to take a break and, and start throwing a little earlier than normal. Um, you know, but that's I guess that's normal because we made several deep postseason runs the years before. So, you know, it's still a normal off season for me, just, you know, every year is different. So you do have to kind of adjust as far as the workload for this year. Um, I'm really not anticipating a lot of big changes. I think um, there's going to be a lot of, you know, managing how people feel throughout the season. Certainly different parts of the season are more important than other parts of the season. Um, we're out there to win every single game, but, um, you know, it's the manager's job, the pitching coach's job, the organization uh, to keep that big picture uh, kind of, you know, at, at the forefront of their minds and, and, and understand how they want to, you know, how they want to, you know, kind of hedge that bet or go about that process. And certainly, certainly feedback from the player is, is super helpful and super crucial in a lot of those things. I don't know a firm plan. I just know my job is to be prepared. And so I'll just do that. So you would say you felt you felt pretty normal coming in after this off season. Yeah, this, is, this has been normal. Yeah, this has been normal. I mean, I'm excited to be here at this time. It's been a nice normal off season, and and um, so it's it's it feels it it feels familiar. It feels familiar. So it's nice. Thank you, Eric Boland. You have the next question. Please unmute. Hey, Garrett. Just um. Following up on, on Marley's first question, uh, on the outside, there's a lot of question marks about the rotation, mainly because Corey and Jameson are coming off of you know the injuries that they are, the surgeries they are. Do you not have the same concerns about what's behind you in the rotation as, as so many other people seem to? I don't have any concerns. No, I, I don't. It's not really my job to be concerned about the other guys. Uh, I'm just here to root and be root them on and be a good teammate and. Um, so I, I, the work ethic is there, the discipline is there, the talent is there. 
Um, you know, obviously they're going to have to overcome some adversity and, and they're in the process of, of doing that themselves right now. And, and so the most important thing for me is to just be there by their side and, and continue to encourage them. And then how long does it take you in, a, in an off season to get over the kind of loss that you guys took last year in game five of the ALDS? Yeah, I, I, I don't think they ever, well, it's certainly they don't ever, I can, I can remember how every single season of mine has ended. And so I, I think that, you know, from, I was probably emotionally affected for, for a few weeks after that. Um, and, 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 uh, and, and, and now we got to move on, you know, we got to, you got to prepare. So you, you can't let it, you know, in, in negatively impact your preparation or your mindset going forward. But if, you know, I, I carry it in my back pocket. I remember who we lost to and why we lost. And, uh, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a motivational, it's a motivational thing for me to try harder this year and, 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 and try to get past, you know, where we did last year. Thank you, Garrett. Dan Martin, please unmute. You have the next question. Hey, Garrett, we were talking to uh, Aaron yesterday and he mentioned that you were going to work with, uh, with Gary as well as Kyle uh, this spring and into the regular season. What, how important is it for you to, um, I guess, be able to have success with both of those guys? I know we, a lot was made last year of, of pitching to, to Kyle in the postseason. You know, what, what are you going to focus on this spring with maybe getting even more comfortable with Gary? Yeah, I think you know, let's not forget the third catcher that we have in Robinson, obviously not on the roster yet, but just signed. So, I, I mean, spring training is a time to build, you know, a team atmosphere and, uh, a good cohesion between the group. And, you know, there's always a special bond between pitchers and, and, and catchers, uh, especially the catchers, you know, can permeate through both the starting staff and the bullpen. So, you know, whether it's Kyle, whether it's Gary, whether it's Robinson, you know, every pitcher's job is to, you know, try to foster good communication and continue to make a positive impact on, on those relationships. So, you know, whoever's back there during spring, whoever's back there during the bullpen, you know, it's your job that day is to try to get your teammate better. And so that's what we'll do. Excellent. Brendan Cuddy, you have the next question. Go ahead. Hey Garrett, thanks for taking the time. What did you do today? Workout wise? I got my conditioning in and I filled a few PFPs. Um, I knocked out a press conference and I had, <laughs> I got to watch a couple guys throw bullpen. Gotcha. Um, also, what's the scouting report that you gave the Yankees on Jamison before they acquired him? What did you feel like it was important they know about him? Yeah, I mean, first of all, you know, the vice was, you know, it was solicited. It, it's not like I made, first of all, it's not like I'm making calls trying to, you know, pull the strings around here and, and, and acquire anybody. But, I, you know, I was asked of my opinion and and um, I, I, I have I have no opinion on 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 the mechanics or the delivery of any player or the health or any of that kind of stuff. Um, I just spoke personally about uh, about a great friend. Uh, as if somebody asked you about one of your great friends, I'm sure you'd, you'd give them a glowing review as well. And um, I just spoke to the character of the player and um, you know how 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 well I think he's dealt with adversity and overcome challenges. Thank you. We go to Lindsay Adler. Lindsay, please unmute. Hey Garrett, um, I'm curious. This being your second year with the Yankees, you're, you know, you're more familiar with Matt Blake and staff, with you know the analysts and things like that. Do you feel a difference coming in this year than maybe you did last year when everything was sort of new to you? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Just, yeah, absolutely. My goodness. Um, you know, uh, a year. Uh, you know, even though it, it wasn't 162. There's a there's enough sample there, you know, to kind of learn the personalities, um, you know, the different people that we work with all the time. Not only as I feel like it's benefited me, but I feel like it's benefited, you know, other, you know, Matt and and other guys as well. Matt was, you know, in the same position that I was, you know, coming in first year. So it's important for him to, you know, get his eyes on players and 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 start to get a feel watching all those reps. And, you know, we're not coming in, you know, quite as you know fresh faced as we were the year before. Now we haven't done 100. 62 grind together but going into last year we hadn't played through a pandemic so there's going to be unique challenges every year certainly the experience helps certainly um you know 
getting to know the people last year and having to work with them, you know, it's been, a, you know, it's just fun to see everybody back. And so, you know, as opposed to introducing yourself 50,000 times a day, you know, you're, you're giving elbow bumps or, you know, waves or, or, um, you know, and, and talking about how the off season was. And so it's a lot more natural. Were there any people who you communicated with a lot over the off season? Yeah, you know, Britt stays on top of the group text pretty good. So we're always usually throwing jabs and barbs in there, whether, you know, it's really to the team or it's, you know, union stuff or, you know, whatever it may be that we communicate. And, and then, of course, you know, I got close to a few teammates that I kept up uh, with pretty regularly. And, and then as we, you know, start to conjugate through spring training and we all start to kind of get the itch, uh, those conversations through the group chats, you know, kind of flow a little better and, and, you know, maybe peel off into a private conversation or a phone call here or there. So, um, you know, everybody's excited to be back and that, that, that vibe is, is certainly present. We're going to take a couple more. We have uh, Darren O'Day, uh, Zach Britton and Aaron Boone to follow. Uh, Tina Servasio, you have the next question. Go ahead. Hi, Garrett. Um, two questions. One has nothing to do with baseball, so I'll start with the baseball question. Um, every year in spring training, the expectations are the same for the Yankees. It's to win a World Series championship. For you personally, um, especially coming into your second year, but knowing there's a full safe season ahead of you now, what are your personal expectations and goals for yourself this year? Yeah, I mean, goal is goal is to um, goals to improve throughout the year goals to, you know, do my job, post up, you know, all my starts, um, and be pitching, uh, at, at my best level. Um, you know, when it counts the most, uh, you know, we, uh, balance, balance the, 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 the length of the season with, you know, with the importance of the games in the postseason. Um, and so, you know, that's always a challenge. It, it, it's what makes the major league so unique and, and so every year, I, I mean, it's not like a new goal, but it, you know, it, it's a goal that, that, you know, presents different ways that you're going to have to go about it each year. And so that's kind of, that's kind of my goal. I mean, I, I, again, I, I did mention, you know, in, in an interview, you know, previously and, and with an earlier question that, you know, I, I want to put a little bit more emphasis on bringing out some, some, so a better delivery sooner. I think last year, you know, it was so important to just get going and hammer the volume and, and be able to, you know, be able to balance the rotation by just being prepared to throw as many innings as I possibly could early, you know, and to, you know, not try to get guys overexposed. And, and so we have a little bit more length here. We have a little bit more time. Um, so really staying disciplined on, in terms of that delivery and then finishing strong. And just want to follow up on something Jamison said when he had his initial press conference. He raved about your close relationship and that you guys, when it was safe, used to get together for dinner. And you were the guy who did the big wine pair. I don't know. I just wanted to kind of curious about your knowledge in the wine pairings, if you cook to the wine or a selection, just a little background on some of those moments with you and him and those particular meals. <laughs> sure. I think you can go two directions, right? You can kind of pick a cuisine and match it with a wine, or you can get really excited about buying a wine and then, you know, match the cuisine. Um, I, I enjoy cooking. Both my parents um, kind of are, are, are fantastic cooks and, and, you know, really the inspiration for, for, for why I enjoy, you know, sitting down at the table and hosting. And um, so, you know, depending on the vibe, um, you know, like I said, we go one direction or the other and, and, um, you know, I just think it's such a fun way to you know, interact with people and, and spend quality time. And, you know, and it, it just seems to be more and more important in a day where it's harder to get away from, from screens. I mean, we're doing press conference in front of screens. And again, when it's safe, um, you know, to be able to do those kinds of things again, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll jump back into it. Um, so I hope that answers your question. Thank you. Bruce Beck, please unmute. Garrett, I hope you're well. Um, just overall here, how driven are you to win a championship for this franchise, for this city? And, and does team success to you supersede all the individual accolades and individual accomplishments? I think um, certainly, I mean, I'm, I'm extremely driven for a championship. Um, I think above all, when we show up to the field as players, um, you know, time and time again, you're hearing players when they go to teams that, you know, go to teams that aren't competing to teams that are competing in free agency or trades, you know, you hear the same comments over again, man, it's just so refreshing to be at a place where, uh, 
we we're going to win or, or we're, we're striving for a championship. So, so every time we lace it up as players, um, I think that's, I think that's the, I think that's the goal. Certainly here, uh, you know, that characteristic permeates not through the players, but, you know, through the rest of the organization. Um, and then from a personal, you know, kind of take care of your own business standpoint, the players, you know, this game is, is, is a wonderful blend of individuality and, and, and cohesiveness at the same time and, and team play at the same time. So, um, you know, we've always been told, and, 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 and I can't remember who told me it, but I've, you know, stuck with it uh, for my career is that, you know, you, you do have to take care of the things that you need to take care of. If you're not performing, um, you know, at the level you should be performing, uh, or you're not in a position to, you know, to play as much or take the load, um, you know, then ultimately you're not helping the team. A, a, a player playing at the best of, uh, you know, at, at his best level is ultimately going to be what's best for the team. So to a certain extent, you know, you are focused on yourself and your preparation and your deliberate, you know, deliberate approach to try to, you know, provide the best possible product out there. Um, you know, but when you play, uh, you, 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 we play to win. So um, personal accolades at that point, take a back seat. Thank you. Bob Clappers, please unmute. Go ahead. Hey, Garrett. Um, you mentioned uh, a little while back that you were mostly affected by the way the season ended last year. I'm just curious, did you continue to watch the postseason? Did you watch the post uh, the World Series, or did you just shut that out? I did. I mean, I did. I like. Uh, you did so watch. I, you did shut down. I, I watched. Um, yeah, I, I didn't watch it religiously, but I, I, I still watched it. Um, so, yeah. Was it hard to, to watch knowing that you came very close to being there? Oh, it's not, it's not easy, you know, anytime. Um, but, but I, I don't know, it's, there's not a whole lot else to do. So, <laughs> I mean, baseball was the only thing that was on and, and I still enjoy watching baseball. And so, um, you know, when you're cooking a steak and drinking a bottle of wine with your family, yeah, you know, the postseason's on in the background. So, Ron Blum, go ahead, please unmute. Yeah. Thank you. Hi, Garrett. In your new role on the executive subcommittee, how important do you want to see some of the holdups in free agency and arbitration for young prospects? rules changed and do you see a great need to change the disincentives against tanking or rebuilding as the teams call it yeah i think oh well, that's a great question ron you're always bringing you're always bringing good questions to the table um i would say that um i would say that both of those things are linked right to a certain extent competition uh and the manipulation of you know some of the rules uh, within the loopholes as it, as it, as it uh, relates to service time, arbitration, and free agency. Um, I think if you have people competing, there's certainly no ceiling on those things. So you can compete as much as you want. But if you're not competing, um, there is no floor. So you can not compete as much as you want to. And I think when we're thinking about the industry as a whole, um, and we're thinking of why people want to watch us um, and the entertainment that we bring, uh, you know, live sports is... Um, all about competitiveness. Uh, it sure it's about analytics, but it's also about narrative. It's also about players and 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 creating magic on the field and and underdogs winning and and you know the all time greats you know continuing to set an example. M much like much like you know if if a, if a team came out of nowhere and won the won the Super Bowl or or Tom Brady wins it for his seventh time, I think there's a beauty in both of those kind of things. And I think that any industry. Um, should focus a lot on competitiveness and and hold their uh, you know hold the teams accountable and and so how we go about that I don't have you know the exact answers but I can tell you that that's that's an important focus competitiveness from the top to the bottom we don't want any more inefficiencies. Thank you. Take the last two, Erico. You have the next one. Please unmute. Hey, Garrett. Uh, you mentioned about seeing your teammate after off season, but. Uh, what was your reaction about Tanaka went back to Japan and assigned his former team? And also during the press conference in Japan, he mentioned that he still have some unfinished business in the major league. Uh, would you like to play with him again as a teammate? Yeah, I mean, there's, 
nothing that Moss doesn't bring to the table that is uh, anything short of world class. So um, wonderful person, wonderful teammate. I, I know he was, I know he was, you know, we, when, you know, we had talked to kind of about the grand scheme of things, you know, uh, playing in front of his fans in Japan and, and, and playing specifically for the Eagles was, was another one of those things that he mentioned that he maybe had some unfinished business with. So um, I've been texting him quite a bit lately. Apparently he's hitting, uh, which I mean, I, that's a little bit iffy. He's got to watch those hamstrings. I'm sure his trainers over there are, you know, and Shingo are watching, watching very, very closely. So um I do miss him a little bit. I miss his smile. He's just, uh, he's got a good personality and, and a good image. And, and I would love to play for him again. And if he does have unfinished business out here, you know, I'm a big fan of his. So I'll, you know, I'll be rooting for him uh, to finish whatever business he feels is undone. And if it's uh, in a Yankees jersey, that would be, that would be wonderful. Um, but as far as this year, uh, huge Eagles fan. Uh, I heard they're pretty good. And so rooting for him. Thank you. Take a final question from Andy Martino. Uh, Garrett, my, my question was similar to Ron's on the uh, PA situation. So I guess I'll follow up by asking why you uh, personally felt interested in joining the executive subcommittee and in a CBA year, if there are particular issues that you're personally interested in engaging in, in your role, what, what drew you to it? Well, I, the first person that drew me to it was probably Neil Walker. He was our first rep in Pittsburgh. And, you know, we were, we had a lot of guys involved at that point. Uh, Tony Watson, Jared Hughes, Justin Morneau. Um, and, you know, Neil wanted to teach me kind of the ropes and kind of about the system in general. So he took me under his wing. And uh, for the few years that we played together, um, you know, he, he, he showed me the roles of player rep. So I took it over. Uh, and then when I left, Pittsburgh and I went to Houston. Um, I had done the same thing with Jameson. Uh, Jameson took over the club rep in Pittsburgh. When I got to Houston, we had already had two reps that were pretty fantastic. Call McHugh's on the executive council um, and Lance McCullers is our rep as well. So it was more of a backseat role there. Um, and then as we got to here, we have, you know, one of all time greats, Zach Britton. So, uh, and Adam Ottavino is a, a great rep as well. I, remember dealing with Adam a few times in, in Colorado on the phone um, with rain delays. So that's a little bit of the history of why I got into it. Um, the role that I'm in now, you know, I was voted in and um, I was nominated by fellow players. So uh, that was a pretty humbling experience. I, you know, I, I think usually those votes are in person and, um, you know, so having it, you know, beyond zoom and like, and like waiting for it to unfold was like, you know, I was like, put the, put the, you know, stop videos, you know, and I was like sweating nervously and hoping that I was going to get it. And, and then, you know, when I got it, I clicked it back on, like, you know, I was unfazed. So um, that was a bit bizarre, but it, it, it means a lot to be elected, you know, by your peers to a situation like that. Again, for me, it just goes back to competitiveness. You know, we have a lot of great veterans that offer great entertainment, uh, quality style of baseball that continuously are getting pushed out. Um, because the surplus value on younger players is too high. The analytics are, are driving the game that direction. And, and, you know, we want to have an open field, you know, for clubs to be able to, you know, it, it, it find talent, find surplus value. We, we want people to be forward thinking in all different areas of the game. But when it comes down to it, if we have clubs that, that aren't competing and they aren't doing right by their fan base and, clubs that win, you know, multiple World Series and then, you know, just tear it all down. You just, I, I worry that we're losing generational fans. I worry that we're doing fans in those cities a disservice. Um, so for me, obviously economics is important. I mean, you can't ignore any of those types of things, but for me, competitiveness is important. I would like to see, um, you know, the middle of divisions, uh, the middle of the league um, incentivized to compete. And I would like to stop seeing teams competing uh, penalized for competing as well. Um, there's maybe a little bit of an imbalance there that, that, um, that I think we can correct going forward. So I know those are general thoughts um, um, and, and I'll just probably leave it at that. So. Okay. Thank you. Pretty strong leadoff hitter for the Zoom uh, lineup today. Garrett, <laughs> thank you very much. All right. Uh, have a see good you, day. everybody. I, see you out there tomorrow, I guess, too.
Uh, we have Aaron Boone coming in. Hola, soy Eduardo Ramírez, pitcher de los Yankees Nueva York. Un saludo a la máquina de partido. Hola, le habla a Junior Chile de los Kansas City. Saludo a la máquina de partido. Hola, soy Ángel Pagán y los invito a la máquina deportiva. Soy Juan Rivera de Los Angelinos. Un saludo a la máquina deportiva. Mi nombre es Carlos Rosa de Los Kansas City. Un saludo a la máquina deportiva. Ereval, un saludo para la máquina deportiva. Luis Castillo. Lo invitamos a la máquina deportiva. Yo soy Kendrick Morales, eh, primera base de Los Angelinos. Eh, un saludo para la máquina deportiva. I'm Mike Jacobs from Kansas City Royals, inviting you to La Máquina Deportiva. Jose Contreras, pitcher de White Sox. Un saludo especial para La Máquina Deportiva. I'm Daniel Murphy with the New York Mets. I invite you to continue with Máquina Deportiva. Hola, soy Brian Peña. Saludos a La Máquina Deportiva. Hola, soy Brian Peña. Saludos a La Máquina Deportiva.